Okay. okay, thank you. We have uh, yeah, almost an hour. Uh, third island piece will give the artist talk of probably 30, uh, 30 minutes. And uh, then I will ask them to and really a lot of time for you to questions via the, the chat. But I would like to give the word to Aya and Peter for their, uh, for their talk. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, the, on the next uh, picture of the um, PowerPoint, maybe you can do the next picture. Uh, yeah. And there is a picture. Yeah, next one after that, there's a, um, a photograph oh, of all the residues yeah. at this point. Yeah. So here you see um, um, a big uh, matrix of color, and it's uh, basically what we uh, did is um, finding out um, the diversity of the spontaneously, most of them spontaneously occurring plants in Mannheim, and uh, especially also uh, the river valley flora. Uh, river valley flora is also related to a bigger project uh, we are working on. And that's, uh, we also did uh, Amsterdam, where it's the end of basically the, where the river ends in, in, and floats into the sea. But we also did a project in Nijmegen, and it's, it's also in, in Holland, and it's in the river, it's big river valley that's near the border of Germany. And also Spijk is really at the border. And that's what we did at the COVID period. <coughs> and um, yeah, um, of course we did then uh, the, the Amsterdam project before this, and that's also where um, Thomas Sternberg mm -hmm. came in. He, the director of Sefer, he he visited uh, the big show of us that was shown in uh, Huismaatschappij Museum of Photography in Amsterdam, and there was the uh, residue Amsterdam project. And for that, because of that, he asked us to come to Mannheim mm -hmm. and to look at the plant world and the situation of relation to humans and plants in and in, 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 yeah. in, I think I might just quickly yeah. explain what you're looking at here. These, yeah. uh, know, these, these are all um, <laughs> colors that are made from the natural plant dye from 408 plants then that we um, uh, sampled and well made small amounts of dye from and then put them onto um, um, reproduce them actually well these are actually from film they put onto a clear film it's, it's sort of the dye is spread the onto the film there yeah an yeah. extract so this is just the, you know these are the actual real plant colors that um so actually what you get is a uh, transparency like a dia a transparency hmm. of uh, Net, which natural material the, the and that's the color it's the same it's the, it's it's what the material and um of course uh, because we are aware of nature uh, and we are thinking it's important also and we want to uh tell this also in our story that the, we we look only for uh common plants plants and that are not rare plants of course and we also and 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 what we do is all always take a little amount of it's just a, a handful of blood of leaves or or, or uh, mm -hmm. yeah it's not um, uh, not yeah we we don't want to have uh, we don't we don't need because we have this little uh, piece of 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 film where we have when we need the color for we don't need uh, a lot of material. Mm -hmm. It's about 300 milliliters of dye that we end up um, having, you know, using. It comes from about 10 grams of plant material. Um, yeah, this is the biggest project we've actually ever done. Um, Amsterdam was 273 plants. Uh, Mannheim is an incredible place in terms of the diversity of plant life. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, in Europe. It's it's uh, basically it's the, in in the middle, and it has uh, a lot of Mediterranean. For that, it has also a lot of Mediterranean plants. It has plants from the Alps, 
and it has also uh, the equal source of plants that you also have in uh, in Holland, so the more northern situated plants. So you have have um, yeah, Mannheim is a rather warm city, so you the you can have really uh, yeah rather exotic plants there. Not not exotic in 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 way of rare, but plants that that, that are normally in more southern places. You can find in more southern places, and. Um, uh, what also um, was here a uh, goal in uh, in Mannheim. Um, Mannheim project is is uh, yeah it's it's also a lot a lot of colors because we were also investigating um, the diversity. So the, the the we 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 went to all the different um, um, uh, districts in, in of the city. And you and you and then you find that's also that you find uh, different soils, different different environments, little sub environments. Uh, like you, of course, have the, the Rhine River Valley with, with the clay, but you also have uh, in, the, in the middle of the city it's sand. It's like more desert-like, and it's also you have also heather. There's also a sandy, natural sandy uh, place, but you also have. Uh, Humus soil and uh, yeah, you more more the the, the more uh, far, fertile uh, soils. So that's also um, <clears throat> what gives, uh, of course, typical plant uh, life. And what we also did for a few plants, like the 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 dock, the bitter, the broadleaf dock, and uh, and the mugwort that are really common plants that are living basically on every in, in every situation or almost every situation we took uh, also from every district one and so there's a slightly also um still an um, comparency uh, of of the the differences in 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 dye uh, from the same plant in another situation so um yeah we can go further in the next uh, to the next um uh, slide. photo slides yeah, yeah um <clears throat> yes here you have um uh this is uh, from the uh yeah you see it's Lazarus it's it's um yeah <laughs> um the the p the 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 latter is the yeah yeah um you said um ah oh, sweet pea is yeah. it I think um, it, it has a help. purple <laughs> it was a, um, in one of the it's it's more like half and there yeah, was a pea. was a whole field of, of of purple flowers and it was growing there um, and so you see the, the it's it, it's what's in the chemicals in of the chemical situation in the plants totally it's not always comparison to the what plant looks like as the flower looks like it's not mm. it, it not gives uh, uh in this way it, in this case it gives no purple color it's it's there's not a, there's an other um uh chemical situation going on in the plant itself and um, if you go further next uh, next uh, slides you see uh the situation of the plant itself and the the stride behind is is, is the real way and um yeah it's, it's in the middle of it's in the middle of the city basically it's just growing there um and um these are um uh area makes uh with a mamiya twin lens uh camera she makes six by six photograph oh, six by six negatives um uh which we print, print black and white um of of all the locations or of, yeah of a lot of yeah. the locations <laughs> where we find the plants to give a context, uh, but then also to look at the world from the perspective more of a plant uh, than the human perspective. So the human activity became becomes a sort of um, backdrop, or yeah, um, 
Oh, what's that word in films? Um, yeah, it becomes yeah. the theatre where the plants, uh, are, and rather than the other way around, that the plants are taking part in the human world, that the human world is a sort of backdrop to the plant world. It's this per perspective thing, which we're quite interested yeah. in. Um, yeah, yeah. But it, talking about this perspective, it's also one of these our uh, urgencies we feel to make the, all these, these these projects. It's it's uh, we 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 are now uh, for seven years very yeah busy with this plan looking at plants, and we for that we we it's 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 um, it's an insight. The plant for it helps us to 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 think uh, and reflect on our relation as a human being on uh, to the to the natural world and the environment and the earth. And we we discovered it, uh, yeah, from history on. Uh, we are uh, as a human being using the earth and the and the, and the nat natural environment instead of looking more. Uh, from yeah, from a decent, uh, was, uh, uh, with a decent um, <coughs> um, approach, and more uh, more equal, and it's yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a reflection on um, uh, what it uh, no. hopefully can be in the future, uh, yeah. and, and and we we but we also discovered that with these plants, these plants are really. Uh, living, um, yeah, we we are living with this wild plant, and this wild plant living with us. They 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 figure out their, uh, they see the, the 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 buildings as rocks. They they not see them as, or they see. I don't I don't know. It's they're not looking at like uh, we look at things, but they 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 can manage their their um, habitat, living there as. Uh, equalism mm -hmm. and they're living on rocks. So. You discover the, the, in a way the most um, um, <clears throat> commendable aspects of humanity. Uh, also uh, things that plants do as well, the, the capacity to survive in the most um, yeah. difficult circumstances. Um, it's also one of the things that I think we as people um, <clears throat> can be the most proud of. Uh, our, our, just need or yeah, drive to survive. Um, anyway, should we look yes, at the next image? Next image yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have first the names. Oh yeah, here's some yeah. more plant colors. Very yeah. subtle differences. Um, it, these are both um, the the uh, poppies. Uh, one is a one is a a big uh, a great a big. Uh, I'm not sure the common poppy. Uh, it's, Maybe you can go stop behind or back. Yeah, that's the um, the common poppy and the, and the long-headed poppy, the long-headed poppy or the bastard poppy. There's a small one, and this you can go further, and then you see a slight difference. The one is the the left, the right one has a little purplish, uh, pink glow in it. Uh, yeah, but they are really. The colors are really, um, yeah, um, subtle. Subtle, yeah. And yeah. Do we have a, what, yeah, what's the? We can go further to the next uh, slide, and then we have uh, the, the the yeah. This is the habitat, the place where we find did find the the common poppy. You see, it's it's totally in the middle of. You see the at the back there is the Bahnhof, and then you have a big uh, road. The, the um, it's just there um, between all the mm. traffic. Yeah, you can go next. Uh, it's yeah, slide. urban urban wilderness. Yeah, we can go yeah. on to the next one. We have. Oh yeah. It's not all this. Oh boy. Um, maybe uh, uh, one one second back because I was um, oh yeah um, but it's just um, what should I come on first lane oh yeah oh yeah we can go further <laughs> yeah so you have um, um, yeah one one in the middle there's a tree 
and um, the left is the um, oh I forgot it. <laughs> um, oh yeah, this is um, uh, Wegbre. Oh, Wegbre. Yeah. What is that? I don't know what the name of it is. Yeah, we have to go back again. Sorry, I was reading it too fast. But it's like you see the the hairy hairy uh, plantain. It's the middle big bed. It's it's, uh, it's one of the plantains that are um, uh, less common. Uh, you have also the broad plantain, and that's really well. You can walk over it, and it's growing further. It's not harming anyway, and. Um, yeah, you can go uh, to the colored, and in the middle you have, of course, the also very common um, elder. And so everywhere it's where, and it can live uh, near the river. It's, it can live with their roots in the water. And um, it's an interesting tree because it also um, uh, sticks stuff, what it's in English. Nitrogen. Nitro yeah, nitrogen, you, it can, uh, um observe it and, and uh, observe it, yeah, yeah. Hmm. so um uh yeah it's a sort of feature remediator basically yeah you can go to the next uh colors maybe we can talk more about um so now you see the the, the plants again from the if you go further you see uh, the plants. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see at the right. You see porcelain. It's a, it's a, um, yeah, a herb basically in the middle of the center. It doesn't need really uh, a lot of uh, soil, basically. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So um, maybe you can talk more about. I um, believe I be. Okay, um, sorry. Common so forth. Yeah, these, these are just all well, these are five close ups of the plant dyes, of course. Um, yeah, well, we have yeah. one step further with the colors. Yeah, yeah, here you see, um, yeah, some are really strong, and basically, uh, you, you see that, um, with this, are all plants that you only use leaves, green leaves, but it's there are specific. Um, molecules in the plant that gives always the different colors uh, you don't know before. And uh, what's for us is also interesting, um, well, how we started this, this project is also uh, we, not because uh, we really want to know. Um, there's a lot of literature about plant color and, and, and uh, because of, of how to use these plant colors for for you for yeah, for uh, dyeing your clothes or for 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 uh, as as a as a material to to use for something, and that's what we why that's not what how we want to look at these plants. We really want to look at it more as a language. We want to discover an inside of the plant world because it. It's reacting. The colors are reacting on that it gives uh, specific nuances in their color because of their environment, because of their soil that they are living in. So that's also why we, um, uh, uh, yeah, not only take uh, for our projects take a few uh, plants, but it's it's necessary to have an an, an, an uh, matrix. Uh, to mm -hmm. have a sort of insight, to have a sort of language, an alphabet with all these colors. <coughs> okay. Should we go on? Yeah. 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 To the next one. These are the names. Yeah. And now you have the, yeah, yeah, the locations. The locations where yeah. we did find them. You know, very recognizable areas of Mannheim, but then from yeah, a very specific. Uh, Point of view. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's like the left is more in the in the Neckar near the Neckar Ufer, um, uh, and in the middle of yours it's uh, Colini Tower. It's it's really in the city. It's just near a building, 
and um, the rhino right is, is, is the rhino say so yeah. there is a little bit more a natural environment already yeah. uh, so yes there, there are a lot of uh, different uh, sub -ecolo ecological systems in it in the city itself so it's really interesting also yeah yeah no, so you can go, on. go further yeah we have the names of the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can go further. Yeah, you can go further. We really wanted to show you also the names because the names uh, of the plants uh, gives, um, yeah, some insight. You see also, also um, very clearly one of the reasons that we use photography is that we, um, from these originals, which um, we make them bigger uh, via, a we, we make a negative and then print them uh, bigger. So that these details, um, so I was in the left one, yeah. uh, the textual details come out because every plant also has a very specific Yeah, some um, have more cellulose, texture, some have more uh, which comes out. pectina in it, so some are more sticky and others are more uh, really uh, grainy. Um, yeah. yeah, you have also like with the ferns, it's not here, but you, the ferns, you can also discover the, the spore and in it and you make it a, a bigger and you see a, really a field of, of um, yeah, the, 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 the spore in it, basically. Okay. Yeah. Next. Okay, next. Yeah. And then you see, I see uh, them in their oh, yeah, Exactly, it's the environment, it's the <laughs> environmental situation again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they can, they, they really grow everywhere. And sometimes on places where, like the left one, it's really, really, there's no, yeah, really almost no soil. It's just little so split in the, in, the, in the pavement and yeah. Yeah, we, do, we have discovered there is a, a quite an interesting correlation between the, um, the degree of stress the plant lives under and the, and the intensity of the color. A uh, plant that's living in really bad soil, sandy, gritty between the cracks, um, for some reason produces much, much stronger color than plants plants that are growing in a greenhouse with um, pot crond, uh, you know, with um, soil. soil, you know, like good quality soil have extremely dull colors, which is uh, just, well, just an interesting yeah. aside. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, if we carry on next. Uh, yeah. Next slide. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a whole bunch of very similar yellows. Yeah. Um, the asparagus is an interesting one. And I suppose it was a leftover from um, cultivated asparagus, which was apparently very big in your Schwitzinger, was it? Um, yeah, in the in the in the, in the mm. not in the mountains, but in the in the yeah. <laughs> hills uh, behind. This is uh, one of the plants that's just growing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and this also. Um, yeah, well, there is there there is of course. Uh, well, we we discovered this also as as a certain beauty, but really not just. Uh, um, um, yeah, want to show these colors as only for their beauty. It's it's also like um, yeah, I I want the well. This is a nice um, yeah. It's 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 um, it's just the, from a philosophical um, approach. You can uh, have this uh, uh, like what uh, how Wittgenstein thought about the white. If you place one white besides another, then you can't discover the white because they have all they have shapes, and uh, that's also one of the thoughts. I thought, yeah, you every every color is important. There's not a, a, a better color or a nicer yeah. color than another color. They they are they all, all different. And Just... what's interesting when you when you have it like almost no colors besides each other, they 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 gonna shine. They mm -hmm. they have they gonna speak louder. <laughs> In itself, so that's that's also a relation you can have as a human being. You can really um, 
reflect on it with your own, uh, yeah, as, as, as a person. Because it's by, we also like, have to look to the time. Yeah, we have to look at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can we can better go further. Yeah. And now we see in them in the next in the next you see them in their environment. Yeah. Well, we can go further. Good. Yeah, we have. Uh, oh, yeah. One, of the, one of the yes, one of the things that we did in Mannheim was um, um, we. Uh, yeah, we have. We want, want to also to have a sort of. Um, um, uh, we want to make a photograph yeah, in, an, in the context uh, of the of the city, but then um, how do, how we we were we were. Uh, we wanted to to show the city, but then uh, with the feeling of not having human activity, but only the the, the activity of things that are not moving, like uh, trees yeah. and buildings. Could you please, yeah, can, yeah, can you come please show the photo? Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, there's two photos. That was actually the first one we made. From um, the one on the right was from the um, as the, the building where the library is. Um, in the center. Uh, uh, you'll notice, and the one on the left was from the Franz Liszt Schule, uh, and that's looking down actually towards the, um, well, the, the, the REM building on the right, on the left, and behind them, Zephyr. The idea was to actually change the time perspective or to, to uh, change more to a um, to the perspective of um, a non-ambulant um, world. Uh, so everything that's moving is, is vanished because the exposure was for an hour long. Uh, so it's more or less just to um, examine the city from the perspective of the trees, even though there's no trees in the right one, but just from the perspective of the non-ambulant um, life forms that we generally tend to think are less relevant. Okay, we can go to the next one. I think. Next file? Yeah, next uh, photo. Oh, yeah. yeah see, and then you here you've got them. This is the one on the <laughs> top left is the um, in National uh, Dance um, NTI? NTM. Yeah, it's the NTM. NTM. And uh, then we've got from the. Um, uh, now, was, this was just a really uh, lovely oh, project to do yeah. because we had the opportunity to meet. A, 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 a wide variety of Mannheimers. Uh, the director of the um, NTM, oh. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, no, it was just it was. Uh, this was from the Krosa. The, the second one to, at the top was from the uh, Krosa Kraftwerk. Uh, the one on the right top was um, Archivum. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, Archivum. And then we've got here the um, uh, Hulk House, links on the left, uh, left underneath, uh, the Colini Tower at the middle, and on the right here from um, the, um, you know, from the architects, uh, yeah. from um, Smoker. Smoker, yeah. Yeah, so from, yeah, yeah significant uh, high buildings from high level yeah. on. Yeah, so we can go to. We can go to the next one, yeah. And with a, a, a long exposure. Oh, yeah. And again, this, uh, the one on the top left is from the Vasa Sturm. Uh, the one uh, <laughs> next to it. The, uh, exposure yeah. No, they're, again, they're all hour long exposures so that in, everything that's ambulant disappears. <laughs> this was from uh, the one next to it uh, in the middle top. That was um, the observ Observatorium, uh, so an 18th century observatory in Mannheim. Then we've got the railway lines over the Konrad Bruch that is from the Palais. Uh, the one under that on the left has got me stumped. I don't remember where I took it from. Uh, it's terrible. The one um, next to it in the middle is, um, uh, of course, from the Victoria Tower. And the one on the bottom right is the Palais, looking directly through the centre of the City palace. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Next. Yeah. And then next. 
And then yeah, come on, and we can yeah. uh, go on to the. And this was actually at the end of the project. It was. Um, you can go to the next uh, file. We did a lot of experimenting with yeah. uh, long exposures uh, because that's also um, to take ourselves out of the normal time frame, and in doing so, you actually um, you find yourself confronted by nature in a different way. Um, yeah, this is um, we we also did uh, because of the Rhine uh, ecologies um, giving it context. We wanted to to have this whole uh, uh, journey from from uh, Manheim, from uh, Amsterdam to Mannheim on on the boat on the on cargo ship uh, in front and um, sixty hours, uh, ten kilometers per hour. Uh, um, yeah. Floating over the river day. and make with long exposures, uh, registrating uh, the environment uh, from the boat uh, and the, and uh, from the, from the water side from the, from the water. These two images here are both through the nights. We were two nights on the boat. The first one is through the Ruhr Kabit, uh, the Ruhr area, I think Kabit, yeah. And the second one is through the Rhine Gorge from um, just under Koblenz. Uh, to the top of the Rhine Gorge, or almost the top of the Rhine Gorge. It was bizarre. At that point, the river was so low that you could hear stones rattling on the on the hull of the ship. It sounded like really heavy hail. Uh, and I, I ran out on the deck and felt around, thinking my camera was well, <laughs> the camera is going to be destroyed. And it was just yeah. It turns out that it was I think a week before the Rhine got closed because it was too no. shallow. <laughs> For cargo shipping in <laughs> July, it was July last year. It's a little water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was a very interesting uh, experience to, <laughs> to just separate yourself from the, the normal world, uh, and every so often you'd insect, intersect with um, yeah uh, with the normal world, like go under a highway you're recognised or see uh, going through. We were cities. not able to go come yeah. off of the boat. Uh, it was we really mm. had to go for sixty hours there, and yeah, it felt also. We made a fifty-five hour long video uh, of the journey, which is the uh, film that was showing uh, in one of the windows. Um, it was from actually from Teal to Mannheim, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, now let's go on. If that was it, Thanks, probably. Uh, yeah? That's it. Yeah, yeah I think cool. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, oh, following yeah. up uh, a oh, small yeah. uh, small piece about the following up. Uh, I told you about this uh, comparison of the plants of the same sort, and we um, took uh, one of the plants and did it, it has uh, special qualities as a phytoremediator that's, that 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 it can uh, clean. Basically, if you say it simply, you can. Uh, it can clean the soil because it absorbs uh, heavy metals and and uh, can um, yeah transform them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did we did it and that and that's the broadleaf the the rumex of to to see folius the the rumex is is so is is a family of plants that can that can do that, and this broadleaf is it's really common so you can find it. In every place, uh, and yeah. so what yeah. we've done is we've taken from eighteen different locations in Mannheim uh, a small sample of soil and um, a big enough sample of soil to grow um, uh, dock plants from a single source from a um, a plant that was growing in a very pure, clean environment, and we grew them for a year. Um, we made samples, or well, we sent. Um, Together with the uh, Department of Geomorphology in Heidelberg University, uh, we had the sample, the soil analyzed before um, um, we grew the plants in it and have done, uh, taken it after we grew the plants. The idea being to see to what extent the color that we make from the plants that grew in the plots, pots um, changes depending on the soil type and the amount of toxicity in, in the soil. Uh, we haven't got a result yet. The analysis is still going on, but um, uh, yeah, it's in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Yeah. Thank you. No. Oh, yeah, Peter. They are the samples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
an extreme differences actually uh, which i think is really quite uh, remarkable yeah. but we still need the data so when we mix the data with the images we, we yeah we have more information go. Yeah. okay yeah yeah hearing you and also knowing you of course uh, i was wondering that you have done quite some projects uh, in the netherlands but also uh, abroad even in uh, new zealand and I'm wondering uh, when Mannheim came into uh, into your uh, into your visions, but before it were your expectations of uh, of uh, of the project, and now one two years later, if you look back on it, uh, where do you similar see similarities with other projects you have done, and what is really specific that you didn't that you didn't expect them? Hmm. Well, what we had the opportunity, this this last part of the project was a, a wonderful opportunity to have an extreme diversity of um, conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got uh, from yeah, all sorts of different uh, soil, uh, different levels of toxic, toxicity, a history of industrial, um, yeah, all the historical elements of Mannheim um made it a very fascinating city to look at plus its location uh, in the center of europe basically you know uh, on the point where two very important rivers meet especially well the rhine yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah. <coughs> yeah it's it's um well it's um for that and also because of uh, the 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 time we had to uh, to, to make it um, uh, bigger and and more um, uh, yeah we could let it more grow in in and that's also um, for discovering um, these these uh, diversity of plant colors and also uh, related to to um, uh yeah this is uh, really an intensive um, um much more industrial than like amsterdam basically because in amsterdam the industry is outside of the city and in Mannheim it's more nearby it's much more complex in that way um yeah to to, to have all this information of the plants um yeah and, and um, um i think yeah this, for one hand, um, has an overlap, but it's it's also really that it's specific. It's specific, uh, for, for that area. Yeah. But did it bring you uh, insights and results? Where you think, hey, for new projects, uh, we want to take other steps too. To yeah, them. absolutely. Um, the Rhine itself uh, doesn't stop at Mannheim; it goes on to Basel. And uh, we had sort of an idea of maybe, well, a, a goal to examine the differences down the whole river. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and a bit, yeah. And, and um, the dynamics, I think, because, uh, yeah, like uh, we in Holland, Holland is really, uh, I discovered much more cultivated and more, the, the rivers are more structured by yeah. hand. And in, in in Germany and if you go further, it's it's yeah, it's, it's, to it's, see it's what more natural. Yeah. So you have more yeah. insights and you're more nearby than a uh, natural uh, situation. And um, that's also um, yeah, it's a big difference. It's really a big difference. Yeah. yeah. But if I hear you also, uh, it's really a process that you in fact apply uh, when you start such a, such a project. And um, um, yeah, it's almost like a scientific, uh, uh, an academic approach of, uh, of working. And at the same time, uh, yeah, you present yourself as, as artist, but the outcome uh, is a kind of unpredictable. Uh, that's of course from every creative process. Yeah. But here, some things, yeah, happen under your hands. And uh, uh, don't you feel? Uh, a kind of a friction between being an artist and this is almost um, a scientific uh, approach of, of working. Well, it gives also opportunities to to have this uh, this uh, um, place because um, uh, it gives uh, freedom for experiment and it, it's um, it's it's, it's uh, yeah that, that's also 
uh, what we need to to because we really have to experiment and of course yeah we we also look at methods of uh from from the like the biology department or what what you can use for like uh determining or, or collecting and it's it can be handy for us to have sort of uh, st structures to work uh, to work with but uh, it's it's just for us uh, as a as a as a help for for getting these these uh, uh, all these information to get together. But we're working. Uh, mm. uh, we're still working as a photographer uh, to uh, visual uh, translation. So we have at the end we have a visual um, uh, outcome, and it's not the an, 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 an end. It's just an, an ask more question of what do we see here and mm. and, and why do we see that? I mean, and, uh, nature is in, yeah. its, uh, in itself very beautiful. It is beautiful. And um, we have the opportunity to pose a lot of questions and to present a lot of questions without having pressure to find an answer. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's actually, um, we present it in a way which anybody can enjoy it a child can look at it and, and find it wonderful uh, a physics pr professor can look at it and find it fascinating um uh, these things have occurred and um yeah uh, we don't no i find there is no conflict it, it, it is um it is very pure it's very yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah and if you look to your mission like uh, you're fascinated with this and uh but is it also <laughs> what do you want to 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 bring and what, what do you want to say to the to the to the to the, to the public or yeah it's essentially um to to show how a world exists actually around you that you and, and not aware of a world that will communicate with you mm -hmm. Um, a world which um, you're basically is extremely, part of it. yeah, you're part of it, mm -hmm. and it's extremely complex, um, e extremely intelligent, and it is plant world. Uh, it's like all of nature. I mean, we are stepping completely away from this idea of, um, well, we're trying to break away from this idea of uh, human beings being in a hierarchy where they're close to the top under deities, you know. Um, I am um, like we were, yeah. I mean, yeah. we like the we, <clears throat> our goal is we're working towards a world where everything in nature has a right to its environment, a legal right, yeah. such like such as the Wanganui River. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wanganui River, there, river in New Zealand in the northern on the northern island. It, uh, in 2017, got a uh, few, yeah, not human rights, got rights uh, related to, to uh, human rights. In, in, yeah, you have to ask uh, in Leslie the river it's possible to, if you want to. It can take you to court if you pollute yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had yeah. also a question of me because uh, it's the Wang Wangayu Wangayu River. Wangayu 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 River. Wangayu Yeah, and as you said, it, it's got a legal status, so it, it is an entity in its uh, in its own. And you yeah. also did research there, a project uh, there. Yeah. And if you relate that to uh, to Mannheim, have you seen similarities? And how do you look at? Would it also be an option? Yeah, yeah. becoming the Rhine, becoming an option. Almost, and, and yeah. almost so, essential. I think it has to go that way because yeah. uh, it has to uh, have a certain um, protection. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, otherwise, the because if if there is is a tool for protection, then then there, people have to think about it because people basically. We discover people need that. Um, otherwise, it's easy to 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 grasp things or use things or overdo things. Uh, you have to think about it. Yeah. it nature will heal itself. Possible or not. We have to give it space and we have to give it the right. Yeah, and a voice. Place. And a voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. Yeah. 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 I'm also looking to the time, and yeah. I can't see in the chat uh, how many questions there are, but I'm sure there will be some questions. So, 
Yes, so I have one question here from um, Simone. She asked, um, the early talk was about plants in harsh soil or little soil environments producing most vivid colors. Hmm. Have you compared these vivid colors to the same plant growing in less harsh environment? And have you tested the dye for chemicals? So she's asking, basically whether the vivid color is um, that is produced by these plants um, is related to the absorbed uh, pollution. Yeah, that's exactly what the, um, uh, what, the, what the image that's on the screen at the moment is. It's, um, that was 18, well, we can't, we haven't analyzed the plant dye for toxins, uh, but we have analyzed the soil that the plant was growing in and then we're going to, when we have that data from Heidelberg University, from um, Dr. Max Engel, we're going to um, compare it indeed with the different colors, because all these colors here um, in this photograph are from the same seed, uh, from, from plants, yes. of the, from seeds from the same plant, uh, just growing in different soil types. So that is a perfect answer actually to that question is, um, well, yes, and this is the result so far. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a significant uh, diversity in color. Yeah. In yeah. Hue. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Insane. You know, like we can clearly assume that the one that's bright red is grown in very nasty sandy ground, for instance. Um, and the one that's growing, that, that's always got no color at all, would be in rather fertile ground. That's something we discovered on our first project, actually. Um, the difference between um, in the north of Holland in the peak ground and in Amsterdam in the sand. Uh, the plants in Amsterdam were bright, bright, bright and red. And the ones in the peak ground were kind of shallow. And then we went to Botlek, uh, which is a seriously industrial area of Rotterdam. Um, and the plant was so polluted that our eyes watered when we tried to process it, it was terrible. But it turned into this really, really, really blood red, deep yeah. blood red, really, really yeah. nasty red. <laughs> yeah. Now it's really interesting. I mean, that is actually um, really, <laughs> bit, bit, that's really a focus. Any other questions in the chat that you see? I can't see any yet, but may I ask a question in relation to that? Um, yeah. Do you, um, have you compared other soil samples from other cities as well? Or is Mannheim, is that the, the first one? And maybe are you planning to, you know, continue this? Yeah, we, we watched that we, Mannheim is the first that we are so far with, uh, basically. We, we had also, uh, we started uh, um, also with, uh, with Holland uh, and then also the Remax from, uh, all districts, but we are not so far with that uh, already, and we will also, uh, yeah, figure it out with other really common plants uh, like the mugwort. Can also be a really interesting yeah. plant for that. Uh, it's it's um, it's nice to 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 do that with plants with certain capacities to to have this uh, absorb 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 absorbing uh, capacity of of, of these. Um, polluted uh, soil, but also um, it has to be a really uh, a common plant, otherwise it's not mm. everywhere else. Not, yeah. We, we did try it in New Zealand with the mangroves um, around the Tamaki estuary. We took, um, I'm not sure how many samples, but a huge amount of samples. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we didn't have the opportunity there to do analysis of the uh, mud. Uh, we had information from the city council about toxin levels yeah. and we looked at areas that were recreational, um, industrial and uh, residential, but we didn't have any conclusion whatsoever and later realized that probably sulfur levels uh, were, were changing the uh, colors um, because there are, the city is built on 10 volcanoes and there are different uh, areas where the volcanic um, residue uh, yeah. gets into the water, or into the environment. So that was probably a... Um, yeah, there a, are a lot of uh, influences uh, always. Yeah. Uh, you have to a variable, take yeah. care of. And uh, yeah, 
and um, yeah, so yeah, we are still working <laughs> with it. It's, it's, yeah, we have a lot of work. To do. I'm sure there will come. There are going to be a lot of questions once we have compared the data to the colours from the Heidelberg um, or from the you know from the um, from the university. <laughs> um, I'm not sure yet. We have to see. But it's definitely in the yeah 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 and interesting yeah mm. yeah photography is uh, very dominant in the in the process and also in the end result uh, how you show it and how you share yeah. it with uh, with the public yeah and uh, it seems to be that the analog photography is a very conscious uh, uh, choice of you yeah uh, but this process uh, is that the process that you invented in fact yourself because to me it sounds quite quite unique to get mm -hmm. from samples from uh, from plants to uh, well to this yeah, uh, visualization yeah. yeah for the colors um yeah maybe it's, you can explain it better but for the colors mm -hmm. it was really necessary to use the analogical uh, uh the techniques and uh, yeah. Yeah, it simply doesn't work uh, with a digital image because the I think the um, there's an interesting thing uh, the colors aren't really what you're seeing. What you're seeing is you're processing in your mind. When you actually photograph them analogically and print them analogically, um, you're confronted by that gap between your reality and the reality. Um, the colors, the color yellow, for instance, will not. Um, no, because, uh, yeah, in in the analogical process, we actually discovered scientific information um, about sp the spectral uh, makeup of the of the colors. We, um, there was really bizarre differences, um, which. Um, in printing, between a printing, um, you know, every different plant has a different set of values you have to print it to to make it look like it looks um, in reality uh, on the print. Um, yeah, it's, that was at first really it's, confusing. It's, uh, the, 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 the physical um, 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 behavior of, of, of as you say, the physical, the, the physical qualities of, of, of analytical photography uh, can read uh, the color um, in a way we need uh, and in a way a digital can't read it. Yeah. And because it's a uh, <laughs> direct um, uh, physical process also. And um, uh, if you, uh, I have to explain a bit more about uh, the, the 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 color itself because the, the, um, we with with uh, inventing the technique we we discovered all, we read, read a, a lot about it and we found out uh, fluorochromes. It's a term that some that an Indian professor invented in uh, the sixties. And that it, he um, he was doing research on the plant color and that and came to a to a, to a discover Conclusion. he discovered uh, that that there are that they that they, that there are that they have uh, two compounds in itself so and that they are reflecting on each other and this this is a process that uh, that the analogical photography can can read. On film, but it's not possible. What the digital uh, in digital translation, uh, what happens then is that they that the 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 counting of the of the <coughs> of the the algorithm uh, will will all filter all these colors out and 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 the the, the color will fall out and yeah. it will not be a homogeneous uh, color anymore. So you. It's it's it will get some it's it will become something totally different then. Yeah. So yeah. that's a bit explain an explanation. Yeah, it's yeah. really a technical, but it's a bit yeah. an explanation in the the, the yeah, difficulties of these yeah. colors. Yeah. yeah, I also have one last question for you because we're also getting too uh, close to uh, yeah. seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I know, you you always want to go uh, forward. Some people around you said, "Well, you should make a publication." 
and you said yes, yes, but we're not going to make it <laughs> in a retro retrospective publication. Uh, but you're now working on a publication. Uh, can you tell me, tell us more about, uh, yeah, what you are going to do, and also yeah. what's what are the next steps for you in that? Yeah, well, it's, it's um, yeah, we we started uh, because we got also uh, this also. Uh, uh, came out of the exhibition we had in, in, in Amsterdam and the, the uh, we, we were asked uh, by uh, Edson van Gelder from Main Studio, he is an, uh, an, a graphic designer and he makes uh, marvelous books and uh, he had the idea of yeah well actually your work is, is so uh, it's like it's like reading a book you can you can but we were not yeah we were skeptic and we were, we were I mean but then um, uh, yeah, by talking, it was very organic. We we are, we didn't uh, have. Uh, we, it was like with the three together, uh, philosoph making a yeah, talking about uh, a story. Uh, one maybe which project can can fit in it, and so it was a bit the other way around. And then well, there was one project, and now it's called we 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 it's Felwa. Felwa means uh, pale yellow, and uh, it's it's, uh, it's related to a part of Holland where it's sandy, and it's basically also the, the part where I grow, where I was born and grown up, and so this and 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 we had already work, uh, but all fragmented, and now it's gonna get uh, into one story in a book. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's about nice. nature and it's yeah. about yeah. the um, paradox in nature that the only thing that's constant yeah. is that it changes. It's a, a part is about rewilding, it's a part is about agricultural land that's changing into wildland again, it's more it's getting marshland again, and uh, yeah, it's part about uh, the burial mounds, the really old ancient part of where, where, what you can find in Holland from the ancient period uh, 5,000 5, before Christ and um, yeah so it's 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 um, it, it has layers of time like the ancient time and the time of a, a lifetime time of the, the one summer of, of, of the place where the farm was for my my parents farm with all the plants but it's also from uh, from uh, generations like uh, 200 years of of, of having um uh how do you say yeah you to to um to change uh, wildland into uh, agricultural land and now change it back again so there's a whole uh process yeah. going on uh, from from uh, yeah from tradition to a new new period yeah. uh related to nature human related always yeah it's always this this red yeah. thread uh, the 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 relation uh, of human the connection yeah. and uh in I think that's a nice, that's a nice last sentence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peter and I, uh, thanks also the organization's thanks. I don't know whether yeah, in the chat there is uh, one burning question, but otherwise we... Uh... I think there's just a comment that um, uh, this is truly amazing and also has visual, the visual, visualization has huge implications on how to illustrate and pass information to a wider public in an interesting way and narrate issues also related to our food intake and health also. So yeah, fascinating and thank you for sharing. That's one comment in the chat. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, no, very nice. Okay, well, thank you everybody for attending and thank you also for the organization to make this all yeah. uh, well. I don't know whether you have any final word. I can, I can just agree here. Uh, thank you so much, Ari and Peter, for sharing um, your work with us today. And um, also, um, yeah, thank you for everyone you know that came today. And I want to thank the Cultural Office of Mannheim as well, who uh, supported this talk. And yes. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening. And um, I will stop the recording now, but you can find it on our uh, YouTube channel afterwards. Thank you very much. <laughs>